Hello again and welcome back to another video. Today we're doing the first part of my making of Alina Starka costume. In this video we are going to be making the underlayers of Alina's kafta as well as some like, spoilery accessories, um, spoilers for the first season of Shadow and Bone as well as Shadow and Bone the book. But I will put up a spoiler warning before that happens so that anybody who does not wish to see it does not have to. And so we're going to be making a top, a skirt, and something else. Um, and if, if you know, you know, you know what it is. I'm going to be making the actual kefta in a different video because the gold work has already taken me 50 hours and I'm not finished with the front. So we're taking our time on that one. Now before we begin, I would just like to do a quick disclaimer that I'm not intending to portray the show's version of Alina. I'm using the show's kefta designs because I really enjoy them, and I didn't think that I personally could design anything that would stand up to the gold work and the beautifulness of the costumes in the show. But the Alina in the show is Shu, which is fantasy Asian, and that is such a central aspect of her character's identity that I, as a white person, don't personally think that I could portray that accurately. So while I am using the show's kefta design, I'm intending to portray Alina's from the books, and that will be shown in the spoiler alert collar, as well as the wig when we get to part two. Below I will be linking some amazing AAPI Alina cosplayers, so you should all check them out. These are mostly going to be Instagram links, um, just because that's where I frequently look at cosplay content the most. I'm also going to be linking a link to donate to the Stop Asian Hate Fund, I believe it's called, off the top of my head, which I have donated to and I encourage you to do as well. Also, one more housekeeping thing before we get into the video. If you didn't notice, I missed my last upload and I have a very good excuse for that. And that excuse is, I adopted a cat. This is Eurydice and she has taken up a lot of my energy past little while. She doesn't really particularly like to be held, but she will tolerate it. Um, so you'll probably see her around in my videos from now on. And yeah, are you my helper? Are you my sewing helper? Yeah? She's a good girl. She does not like being held. Okay, you're free. And I believe that's it. All right, let's get started. What are you doing, Goofy? You're in my way. No. <laughs> no pouncing on my fabric. All right, so first off, we have the shirt. Now, there's not a lot of places where you can see the shirt in the show. It's usually covered by the kefta, since this is the underlayer. But you can see it in a few behind-the-scenes photos that actors have posted, as well as on a lot of background characters. This is a traditionally Russian shirt called a Kosovratka, I think. I am so sorry for butchering that if I did. So I'm using a traditional Russian shirt pattern from Folkwear Patterns to recreate this look. And so here I am just cutting out all of those pattern pieces. Um, I used a really thin like polyester shirting in the show. I'm 100% sure that Alina is wearing silk, but I was not about to purchase silk for something that you couldn't see. I will save the silk for the actual kefta. So I'm cutting out all the patterns and then I'm sewing on the lining for the top of the shirt um, and I just wanted to read you a little bit from the book. I really enjoyed the choice to go with this traditional shirt because in the books when Alina gets her kefta it's the shirt is described as a long blouse of thin cotton that tied with a dark blue sash and then she says they were strange clothes similar to what peasant men and farmers wore but the fabrics were finer and more expensive than any peasant could ever hope to afford and i really like the choice of going with the traditional shirt because it really reflects that and i like that the first army the non-magical people are also wearing these same shirts Here I am putting the facing on for the closures. I opted to do a lot of hand sewing with this project. I thought it would just contribute to the fine look of it. So pretty much anything that you can see around my neck is done by hand, just so it looks a little daintier.
Ma'am, do you have something to say? Thank you for your input. And then here we are working on that collar piece. For the closures for this shirt, I opted to do fake buttons. These are the only buttons that were even remotely white that I had on hand, but I'm hoping to replace them later. So. The keftas have fake button closures, so I thought it would be okay if my shirt also had a fake button closure. So the buttons are just sitting on top and then it will snap closed. Then the only parts that I did by machine are sewing the sides up and there's a side panel that I'm inserting right now as well as sewing the sleeve edges. Of course, all of my seams got pressed flat. I didn't include a clip of me hand felling these seams down because at that point it had just been a lot of hand sewing videos. And here are the cuffs of the sleeves and those also got sewn down by hand. Next is the skirt, which Alina's not wearing a skirt in the book. So the skirt are another thing that is difficult to see, but in a behind the scenes video that was too blurry to be able to show you, you can see that the skirts are done with a box pleat in the front and then knife pleats on each side. So that is what I'm doing. So after cutting my big rectangle, I'm pressing up the hem so that that can be done by hand before the pleats make it too unwieldy to handle. After that, I can work on my pleats, which are my nemesis. I really hate doing pleats, but I will suffer for Alina. I'm just measuring out where they have to go and marking those with pins and then folding the fabric under. This fabric really did not want to fold nicely and evenly, so it was a little bit of a battle to get all of the pleats to lay flat all the way down to the hem.
this fabric was hell to work with. And just look at it and it frays. So that's really fun. And then I added a few more pins to secure it further down, so it will be out of the way when I attach the waistband. And then we can get to ironing. I started ironing it from the back just to make sure everything stayed in place when I switched to the front. You can kind of see the fabric getting discolored. For some reason it turns brown when it's hot, but as soon as it cools down, it goes back to gray. I've never experienced that before, but I promise the end skirt looks gray completely with no discoloring. So that was weird. And then I ironed the front as well. And I'm spritzing it with water just to make sure it's nice and set. And here is my supervisor. She's falling asleep on the job. And then we can get to machine sewing. First things first, I'm closing off the edges of the waistband so that it can be attached. And then the waistband gets sewn on. I'm sewing over the pins just because I don't trust myself to keep the pleats where they belong if I didn't do it like this. And then after that, I get to sew up the side seam, which will be finished by hand and the open edges will also be finished by hand. So I'm whip stitching the waistband down and then the side seams got finished with the same method as the shirt, which is felling, which I didn't record for either of them. And then finally to close it off, it just gets a single skirt hook. Now time for some spoilers. So if you have not seen Shadow and Bone or finished the book, move on. So we're gonna do the collar. Started off by crushing some tin foil into the shape that I want it to resemble. And then I'm covering it with this clay. This clay is not what I ended up using. You will see why in a minute. Um, this is some air dry clay. It was really heavy and it got everywhere. I don't recommend it, so I'm not even gonna show you the brand. Alright, so you've seen me make these antlers, well not this pair of antlers, but my first pass which I used a much heavier and denser clay, and they turned out just a little too heavy and a little too fragile for my liking. So instead I ordered some foam clay, which I'll show you the brand right here, and I remade them using the same method. They're covered in their tin foil, which you can kind of see 
that is covered in the foam clay and then I made some little ridges with carving tools and I embedded magnets in the end so they stick together. Wow! So now the next step is going to be sealing these with some Mod Podge, just a brand new bottle of it, and then we can get to painting. So now I'm just sealing that off. And I'm using this other stippling brush to kind of give it a little bit of texture. It didn't work super well, but it worked worked okay. And then I mixed up this brown color. This was not really a good choice. And I painted these stripes on it to try to give it like an antlery look, but I didn't have a small enough brush, so they ended up just looking really weird and bulky, and it just all around was not a good thing. So then after I spent a very long time doing that, I mixed up this clear mixture and then I used Mod Podge, some white paint, and a tiny bit of the brown and I went over it and I covered them up so that it was kind of an underpainted texture. Um, it kind of worked. I don't know how I feel about it. But then I still wanted that stripey look, so I used a toothpick and gold paint to make more stripes on it. And you can see how those look there. And then it all got sealed off and it's it, that we are all done. Thank you so much for watching this part one of my Alina costume. I hope you enjoy part two. We will do the kafta coat and the kafta belt. I think that's it. I don't think I'm making anything else. Kafta's gonna take long enough as it is. I have a few things I'd like to change before the final look, namely the buttons. I think a mother of pearl button would be better than these beigey ones. That's fine. And I will have a different wig. Stay tuned. I hope you enjoyed. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe down below. Don't forget to check out those links to other Alina cosplayers as well as to the donate link. And yeah, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Okay, bye!